right, so welcome to my last video here for this series of product videos, experimentations, kind of just little fun play times that I've been having with these art rollers. And uh, I've been doing these for Donna Downey Studios and The Artist Gang. I did another series on Cray Pot Oil Pastels, so check that out as well. In this video, I wanted to um, do another experiment, of course, but in this one I wanted to leave a void, not a resist, but I wanted to put down some paint and then run my art roller through it, similar to when you use it on a jelly plate and you run something across it and it picks up the paint. I wanted to do that here. So I'm so that's what I'm aiming for, and it doesn't really work out. But I I have another very cool uh, technique for you that does work out a lot better, which is nice because not everything has been working out, which is okay because it's fun to experiment and try new things and and to find things that do work. So so let's get down to it. Right now I am doing some uh, just some I'm paint application. It's straight up acrylic, and I'm painting it on with a palette knife and I was going I just wanted to get like a horizon in this one and here while the paint is still wet this is when I tried to do the void and it kind of actually worked in some areas but not in all of them and so I wasn't I tried to line it up and do it again and it worked a little bit better this time and I'm not sure if that's because the paint had started to get tacky and was more willing to stick to the rubber at this point but I'm not sure I don't know it's still not as good as I wanted. So what I'm going to do is completely dry that so that I can keep building on top of it. And I just use my heat gun and keep it moving and keep it a few inches away from the paint and everything seems okay. And I'm going to get out some more paint. I'm using this dark gray by Amsterdam Acrylics and then the light gray is from Dina Wakely. And I'm just really not happy with those marks that I got, with those voids. It, it just wasn't what I wanted. I wanted like really big open voids, so I'm gonna cover them up. And I'm gonna keep layering back and forth the different grays, and I love this like um, texture that you get when you scrape a palette knife and it gets kind of, it's almost like a, I don't even know what to call it. Like it, it's a scrapey texture. It kind of looks like rocks or something like that, gravel maybe, but but I really love it. So I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to create sort of like a second little horizon line directly above the main one. And, and at this point, I'm just trying to sort of camouflage in those weird voids that I made earlier that I'm not loving. And it's fun and, and painting with a palette knife is great because the textures that come from it and the, the paint gets gets thick pretty quickly and it's kind of cool and the paint starts to grab the other paint. And so far I had sort of just scraped with the darker gray. So at this point I thought I would scrape with the lighter gray from the bottom up. And it creates a cool sort of ombre effect. But it's unique because it has all this texture and it, it's really fun. And, and you should definitely try it. If you've never painted with a palette knife, I highly suggest it. I still wanted some voids. And now that I had a gray and white block, I decided that I really wanted to pull in some the pink the, the kind of blush or rose color that we had and I thought what if I created an acrylic skin around these shapes so that I still had a void but I had this like cool pink acrylic skin that I could then apply to my block it seemed like a surefire way to mess up <laughs> that's what it seemed like I'm not gonna lie but I thought as long as the paint was thick enough to create a skin, but thin enough to dry completely, then I would have a skin and it would be cool. And the other thing that, or like something that I neglected to realize was that these, I mean, I know that they are, but when I'm sort of thinking of things to do with these, this part was not computing. The fact that they're round. So I don't know if that, how much that plays into everything, to some of the things I've been trying, but I'm going for it. So I painted very thickly the pink paint all around it, and I started to, I let it dry. I used my heat gun a little bit, but I, 
I was really careful because I didn't want to ruin the rubber because of the art rollers are like this bright red rubber. And uh, then I let it dry. I, I thought I let it dry all the rest of the way. And then I started peeling up. When I started peeling it up, I did notice that it was it's still pretty wet um, in the thicker parts of the paint. But uh, at this point, I am, I'm like having fun and I'm really excited. So I'm just going for it. This is where like my inner child kind of peeks through because I should have let it dry a little bit longer. But I didn't. But then I have this really cool skin and it, it tore in some places and at first I didn't like that but it totally grew on me and it gets kind of kind of messy and grungy and it's really, I, I like it. It's fun and I have the voids that I was sort of going for but now they're voids in pink rather than in the gray looking through the white and it's nice. It's interesting and it's fun and um, it's totally experimentational and it works it worked kind of weirdly, but it's very cool. And I would totally do this again. The um, only, I need to glue this down now. And it was kind of wet on the bottom, so I should have been a little bit more careful. I got some pink kind of out and about, but I do end up patching that with some gesso. I'm just using some gel medium. I could use another, like, uh, well, acrylic anything. I could even use acrylic paint to glue my skin down. But the gel medium is nice and clear, and it will dry clear. And I use a matte gel medium. I hardly ever buy gloss. Gloss totally has its uses, but usually not for the kind of stuff that I'm doing. So... I always have matte gel medium on hand and then that way when it dries it doesn't have like this weird glossy sheen in some areas where I didn't use any glossy products. And I'm just scraping that off the side because I wanted the sides of these to be perfectly white. And can you guess what I'm going to do next? Can you? Are you ready? Make sure everything's dry. Permanent. All my layers are looking pretty good. And I love the the sort of juxtaposition that, that that very feminine pink has against that scrapey texture. You guessed it. I'm going to scrape a little gesso. Not a lot on this one because I have that big white portion at the top. But I just wanted to highlight some of that texture a little bit more and sort of marry the whole thing together. Which is what white gesso does for me. It, it makes the whole piece feel a lot more connected. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I am really glad that you've been watching my videos. Um, please feel free to find me on YouTube from in my own YouTube channel if you're visiting from somewhere else. I'd love to have you along. Dee Dee Katrin. You can subscribe. You can find me on Facebook. These art roll oh, and Instagram and my website. Um, these art rollers are available in the Donna Downey Studios we um, online web store. And also, I am would assume that she has them at her retail store in North Carolina. So she has a really good selection. They're very cool. Lots of ways to use them. You know, um, these are just five ways. There's a lot. Come on, right? These are so cool. Gi like giant rolling stamps. They're really awesome. So thanks for joining me, you guys, and I'll see you around. Bye.